It's Tuesday, September the 7th, and we are live from Hickory. It's country-ish. Alan! Get the country, boy. And he's making it good. He was Jaws underdog, dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green and headed for some cow. Wound up a TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. Mmm, <laughs> that's right. I am from Hickory. I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy. No matter where you are. What up, Bumpkins? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 93 of Country-ish, and we have a very funny, fraudulent show for you today. We got residual checks. I'm going to give away some money in this episode, so get ready for that. We got best trends, what's going on in the news, crazy stuff up in the air, uh, fake vaccine cards, the fair was in town. And very funny comedian Rich Scheidner. Going to zoom into the show, so stay tuned for that. We're not just live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and Twitter. We're also a regular old podcast for your ear holes. So <clears throat> don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share to the podcast. That helps us out. Write us a review. That always helps. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, we're live. And one way uh, I want to prove it to you is... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I couldn't do this if we weren't live. <laughs> how could I do that? Hey, John, do that? I can't. How would I know to do that? And we're growing a little bit. That's because you guys are hitting that share button on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. I think you can share. It's called retweet over there on Twitter and Instagram. I think. Anyway, there's a little share button. And uh, what I'd like to do now is. Um, is beg you to do that. And uh, I know you're thinking, well, John, if I hit the share button now, I'm going to miss a funny thing that you do with your face, you know, because you're, you're very visual. So don't worry. I came up with a thing that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be entertaining for the next, I don't know, 10 seconds probably to an hour. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and hit the share button while I beg you. I'll look right down the pop. It's the share stare. If I could make you share... I want you to do it today. Please hit that arrow button that points his way. I want you to hit the share button. I need you to hit it now. Oh, that's my favorite part of the share stare. <laughs> share does that. She'll go, oh, you know, that's why I do it. Uh, but look, I appreciate you doing that. Uh, if you didn't do it, I appreciate it when you get around to it. Do it on your own time. You can do it at the end of the show. Anyway, um, we're checking your comments. No, I'm not checking them. Obviously, I, right now, I'm talking to you. But I got two interns that are sitting over here that are checking your comments. And from time to time, I'll go over there and ask them what's up. And I'll read one of your comments. Let me ask you a question, in fact. Um, do you have a bad school picture? Remember mm -hmm. school picture day? Yeah, well, that's a coming around. And uh, we'll share some of ours, but I want you to share some of yours. Put in the comments section. We'll talk about it if it's funny. You know what I mean? Uh, I got two interns over here. One of them is doing YouTube. One of them is doing Facebook. Right there to the left, very handsome devil, wearing a beautiful Hendrick Honda hat uh, and a beautiful g ginger beard mask and a country-ish T-shirt. I'm talking about Elliot the intern. And right next to him is his intern. Uh, Elliot, the intern's intern, also known as Mark, have a ball. Good, good to see you guys. How we doing? Doing good yourself. Very well. I'm doing great, man. So you guys let me know if something hilarious happens. 
Okay. We'll do. And we'll go check in for, to you from time to time. Uh, but before we do that, let me introduce the man sitting across the table right here. Very tall man. Clock's in at 7 feet 32 inches tall. Uh, used to play a little basketball for the Charlotte Hornets. Maybe you remember the Kelly Trapuca years. He was around there in that time. Um, some people call him the fly swatter. I call him the southeastern man of mystery. I'm talking about Mr. Sebastian. How are you, man? Hey. Fantastic. Oh, it's good to oh, see we're you. We're so close now. Yeah, we're so close. We can do Wonder Twin powers activate. Dude, wow, you're so big. I apologize. <laughs> Okay, the Wonder Twin Powers activate form of a new studio. And we Honestly, have a kind of shape of cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. We have a new country-ish sign right here made by uh, Brian Poe. Did that. Check him out. We've got uh, new painting. We've got new monitors, which you can't see, but we're we're digging it, dude. It's good to see you. We had a good weekend, huh? We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Uh, drafted fantasy football for my brother this weekend. Yes, you get to sit into some chaos. Yeah, I haven't played fantasy. I, I took last year off, so I don't really, I didn't keep up with anything other than just the Panthers. To be honest with you, yeah. So I don't even know a lot of these players. You know, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so uh, uh, Jason had me draft for him. That's my brother, and he came in last place, which means. The toilet bowl champion. You were the toilet bowl champion. And I had to do the penalty stuff. Yeah. So you have to wear a stupid uh, toilet bowl or a poop emoji hat. Yeah. But I think we have a picture of it. Yeah, there we go. So that's uh, – thank you, Jason Reap. That's what uh, I had to do uh, during your draft since you were out of town having fun. I had to wear your emoji – a poop emoji hat. And that's the trophy they made for the toilet bowl champion. That's a guy sitting on a toilet. Very strong-looking dude. I think it's the Hulk. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jay, with him, it's it's modeled after Jason because he's <laughs> won it probably more than anybody else, and he kind of looks like that. Yeah, I mean he's big, and they call him Jaden. Jaden, yeah, because he uh, anytime he texts Johnny, it corrects that to Jason to Jaden for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So that's that was that that was a good time. Um, we come up with a new beer called Chub Light. Yes, our buddy West P. West Pittman, who sometimes interns here, <clears throat> uh, was wearing a shirt. I believe said Thug Life. Yeah. Was that what it said? It said Thug Life. Yeah. yeah. But the font was weird looking, and the more we drank, the more we couldn't understand. It's hard to read. Someone said, what does that say, Chub Life? Yeah. And then someone said, Chub Light. And then we go, well, that's a beer. So then we make commercials. Well, we have have to come up with what the Chub Light beer is. Yes. Well, what? What do you think? <laughs> well, Chub Light beer, and this honestly needs to happen. This will be a great invention yeah. for guys, you know, of a certain age who want to continue drinking beer and not get the, uh, the 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 bad side effects that might come along with too much alcohol when it comes to the love making. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of an ED pill in it. A little bit of Viagra, a little bit of something in the beer. Just a little bit. Just a tad. Just, yeah, not enough. You can drink like four of them to get like one pill. Yeah. And so it gives you a chub, and it's also a light beer, chub light. Chub light. Dude, we're leaving money on the table if somebody don't do that. Yeah. (laughs) So we we can Trademark it right now, though. Yeah, trademark, hashtag chub light. That's us. (laughs) We said it here first. Um so that was fun. Had a good time uh, drafting for my brother. I was supposed to get a colonoscopy tomorrow. Oh, that got oh, canceled. Wait a second. Yeah, that, that got, got canceled. canceled. Yeah. Well, good. I guess. I mean, I don't know. No, I, I, I postponed it a year. Turns out my insurance doesn't cover it fully till I'm 50. So anyway, that's the thing. I just wrote it down. Had to talk about it. I'm fine, by the way. Uh, uh, I got to say happy birthday to somebody. Who? Guess whose birthday is right now as I'm talking. This is how you know we're live. It is Tuesday, September 7th. It is 8, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And guess whose birthday is today? Could it be somebody that's been here before? Yes. Could it be one of our former interns? Yes. Could it be... Isaiah! Isaiah! The intern. Happy birthday, buddy. I'm not going to sing happy birthday to you, but we miss you here. You want to say anything to Isaiah Elliott? Yes, we miss you, buddy. Get back quick. Yeah, there you go. Strong words <laughs> from Elliot. No. Uh, seriously, happy birthday, uh, Isaiah. Get here quick. Um, what else can I talk about? We've got to catch up on all kinds of stuff, dude. All right, so let's do this. Um <laughs> Lots of stuff going on in the news. You know, I this next segment, what I like to do is go to Twitter 
Mm-hmm. Click on the hashtag, find out what is trending. What are people talking about? And then we'll just weigh in on it. You know what I mean? Because I want people to know we're live. We're in the know. This is what's in the news right now. And here's how you know. It's a segment that's called, Ooh, it's the best trend. Is what you're talking about. All right. Did you like that? I like the eye movement. <laughs> I felt like you were in REM sleep for a minute. I was like, do I need to wake him up? Oh, yeah. This segment is brought to you by, we have a sponsor. Oh, tell us about it. Yeah, brought to you by Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Are you in the market for a new car? Who cares? Go to Hendrick Honda of Hickory regardless. No, honestly, they have uh, great vehicles, lots in stock, and they'll give you a good deal. Honestly, go down there. Get your hot dog. They got hot dogs, too. There are all kinds of, kinds of random Honda. food stuff going on. They feed you and they... They think they feed you? Talk to Batman over there. Uh, in fact, I have a little surprise. In uh, in a future uh, upcoming segment on this episode, there's a Hendrick Honda shout-out. Ooh, a tease. You'll see it. So check out Hendrick Honda of Hickory uh, for all your Hendrick Honda of Hickory needs. Tell them John Reap sent you. All right. Whew, couple things. Let me oh. get to this one first, and then we'll get to some fun stuff. This just happened. This is how you know we're live and current, because this happened today. Now, if you're listening to this later, this, is, this might be old news, but this happened today, two hours or three hours before I got in here. Uh, hashtag uh, unruly passenger on American Airlines is going off. You know, this, this bugs me. There's too much negativity, too much fighting in the air these days. It's why I choose to drive uh, recently. In your new Honda. In my new Honda Honda Passport 2021. I love it. So this guy, Timothy Armstrong, 61, of Las Vegas, was cited for public intoxication and disorderly conduct on the flight from L.A. to Salt Lake City. And, uh, well, we we got it right here. I guess let's, let's watch some of this, and then we'll weigh in on it. This is what's going on right now in the news. Check this out. This guy's crazy. This guy's saying, you can't hold us. And he goes, we're not on the ground. (laughs) They're in the air. And I guess this guy thought that they were just on the uh, tarmac waiting or being delayed. He was so drunk. He He was so drunk he he didn't know he was in the air. Yeah. You know, so that's, yeah, they that's, should have like a little thing on the airplane where they, they hook a little strap to you and just put you right out there in the, like, a, like a little trap door. To put you out of the plane. Yeah, like they'll just dangle you for a second. Oh, oh. And <laughs> sober you up. It'll sober you up fast. Oh, yeah. 22,000 well, feet. <laughs> going, what, 500 miles an yeah. hour? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what'll do it for you. Yeah. Why don't they have an emergency exit for drunk people? Yeah, an ejection seat for... An ejection uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, instead of going ejection to the roof, seat. it just goes through the floor. Yeah, it just drops. Yeah, it just drops. Hey. I like that. I think that should happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, because what's going to happen is because of guys like this, they're going to ruin my travel day. Let's keep watching it. Look at this. So he's already, the, the flight attendant's doing a good job. Sit. You see anyone else getting up? Sit. This guy's going to be back to Sit. You sit down on that seat you stay. Don't bite it. Really? I'm going to pause it. No. He just goes, I, I don't know if you understood him. But he said, Joe Biden. <laughs> Really? He doesn't know what he's talking yeah, about at this he point. Doesn't. He's just yelling out like what he thinks. You think that guy's a dog owner, the, the flight attendant? He has to be a dog owner. Oh, oh. Sit. <laughs> sit. <laughs> and the, the guy the sit. up in a straight sit. line like dogs will do. Yeah. Like trained dogs. He should have said heel. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Should have told that man to heel. Oh, yeah. Give he a, now, once he sat, give him a treat. Give him a little, yeah, a little, should have given him a little cracker. <laughs> do, well, the, the, the noise, the, the little clicker they have. Yeah. And then give him a treat. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, let's continue. I'm sorry, the Al Jackson, this video is probably, like, not cooperative, but...
doesn't have, this just happens to me a lot with a mask. <laughs> uh, hold up. <laughs> All right. What the? That looks like these pig snouts we had at the, at the fair trying to put the pig snout on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he looks like a, he, he's acting like a zombie, right? Yeah. This is how zombies act. <laughs> yeah. So it's bath know. salts. It's bath salts. <laughs> yeah. This is not the walking dead. This is the flying dead. Yeah. Because he's in the air going 500 miles an hour. Uh, what, this is this is what it's just more of that. You, you continue to play it, but it's more of this idiot um, acting like a zombie. Oh yeah, that's it. So so here's my thing. Uh, his name is Timothy Armstrong. Hey dude, you're ruining it for the rest of us. Some of us are trying to enjoy our travel days. Our airplane bottles. Yes. So what's going to happen? Because this drunk idiot can't control his liquor. Um, they're going to ban it at some point. Mm. It's going to be gone off planes and not just planes, the entire airport. Mm. And that's going to ruin my, my life. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one thing I kind of look forward to on travel days sometimes yeah. is like, you know what? It's going to be a long day of travel. At least when I get there, I can crack open a beer and enjoy it and just enjoy myself. Yeah. Uh, now, Timothy Tim. Armstrong, trying to make a point. In the air. <laughs> You're 61, dude. Come on, man. Anyway, um, it was captured, uh, as you can see. This is flight 1802 from L.A. to Salt Lake City. Uh, and it was an American Airlines flight. And he's going to land in the Mormon capital of the world. <laughs> That's Isn't right. that hilarious? It started with him yelling at the Asia, an Asian woman in front of him to sit down because you mentioned something in pre-gaming about the lady, someone who's standing and not sitting. That's yeah. kind of what, how it started. Uh, I don't know if that part, it, that part wasn't in this video, but, uh, my point is this, uh, Timothy sit down, shut up. And, uh, just look, when we're in the air, we know the rules. Just, yeah. Uh, Oh, ruin, this is my this life, is bad man. that they they duct tape. I mean that they banned they the duct, duct tape. tape one guy. Yeah, they banned the duct tape. I heard. Yeah, you can't duct tape a passenger anymore. You still should be able to duct tape them. Well, if we can't duct tape them, then I think we should go to your idea. <laughs> Eject Pull the them. lever. Get rid of Pull them. the lever. <laughs> yeah, you're out of here, dude. All right, let's move on to something more pleasant. It is also national hashtag. Beer Lovers Day. Now, I know that's... Oh, that's yeah. all about me. Yeah, yeah, all right, so look. So we knew today was National Beer Lovers... Oh, that's too loud. Oh, yeah. Did Man, I, let's do it. All right. It's, there it yeah. is. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it's yes. National Beer Lovers Day. Um, on September 7th, that's today, uh, as I'm talking, National Beer Lovers Day celebrates the grains, hops, and brewing methods across many eras. So I got this beer... Uh, Elliot brought us this beer. Nice. From uh, it's a port it says Port City Monumental IPA Indian Pale Ale, six point three percent alcohol. And uh, who, do you want to give this person a shout out who brought us this beer? <laughs> John Duke at Duke's uh, Restaurant and Wine Bar, right down the block. Well, cheers to you, cheers brother. To you, brother. Cheers, cheers to everybody. Happy. Uh, One happy thing we like is beer. All roast. the bees, John. All the bees. Beers. Blondes. Brunettes. Brunettes. Boobs. Boobs, bikinis. Bikinis, babes. Oh, we love all the bees. I like anything starts with a bee. <laughs> uh, do you guys have a beer? <laughs> no, we were left out. <laughs> Good. I told Mark Stamos to get you guys some beers. You don't have anything over there? You don't drink beer, do you? Uh, I quit drinking five years ago. You don't drink beer. What Do you, do you want anything? I'll get something later. All right, you can have this because this, uh, this is an IPA. John, Actually, this is not bad. John doesn't what like. What do you think of this? I like it. John doesn't like beers that have like twelve different names in front of it, like mm-hmm. a porter with a with a splash of of you know yeah IPA. This is smokehouse easy, monumental. It is monumental. It's good. Thank you. Well, aren't Shout you out. going to Washington D.C. next week? Oh, and you yeah. ought to be thinking about monuments. That's true. Maybe I'll have a monumental at the Washington Monument. Yes, I will be going to Washington D.C. That will be uh, September. 16, 17, and 18. As of now, I'm going to the DC Comedy Loft. Uh, that gig has been moved three or four times. Knock on wood. Fingers crossed this time. Uh, it won't get canceled. Come see me. Uh, tickets at johnreap.com. Click on tour dates. Let's move on to the next national something or other day. Uh, September the 9th. Okay, so this will be two days from now as I'm talking, or it could be 
live to you right now if it's already on YouTube as a clip. Yes. So, hey, today, September 9th, it's National School Picture Day. Mm. So what that means is on the second Thursday in September, National School Picture Day reminds us to put on our best smiles. <laughs> Picture Day creates memories that last a lifetime. Uh, and a lot of those memories you wish you could forget. I've got a bad school picture I thought I'd share with everybody. So if you're watching this live right now, good, put, a, put a school picture down there. I want to see what you look like back then. Here's me. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up, Old Navy. That's uh, more waves than Atlantic Ocean going on right there. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? That's, it could be the Red Sea. <laughs> oh, boy. I've got more, Alan. I've got more. <laughs> Wow, oh, dude. Wow. I'm not sure what grade this is. Where do you think that is? What grade Could you is ever that? imagine that you get a hot girlfriend like you've got currently? No. no. I mean, isn't this amazing? I'm this gives us it. all hope. It should. It should. <laughs> this, this should give everyone at home hope because look what I turned into. Yeah. So all you young kids out there, don't yeah. dis- dis- be discouraged. No. Take this picture out. Yeah, use this as motivation for Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. If this you kid... can be a John Reap too someday. <laughs> I want to say possibly sixth grade. Sixth grade. That's probably or fifth sixth or grade. sixth grade. I like the shirt though, dude. The shirt's not. The shirt's hot. Like was that like one of those rugby had long sleeves and everything? No, I, think, I believe it was a short sleeve. Was it shirt? short? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It looked like I, I feel like it's some sort of navy looking thing. Um, but yeah, braces. I don't know if you can tell. I can tell you got braces on. I got braces under the uh, no lips. Uh, uh, the hair is very wavy, very <laughs> red. Um, yeah, yeah. I do remember uh, my braces. I was the. Uh, you know, now when you get braces, they can hide them. They can make them yeah. invisible. They can they just put retainers in now. Back in the day, dude. No. Everything metal. on every tooth was the kind that went all the way around the tooth. Didn't they they called like them bands, not neon. brackets. And they had neon, didn't they? Didn't you get neon bands? Those or? rubber bands. Rubber bands. And they pop off. You would have to get sometimes that would hook on. I'm talking yeah. about the metal itself yeah. Yeah. was a band that went around band, yeah. the entire tooth. And they used cement. And they used yeah, this thing called the tapper. This. Yeah. <sighs> that was every tooth in my head. Yeah. That was a horrible year right there. Two years. Yeah. But, uh. Here we are today. Here we are today. Look at this Happy guy. National School Picture. Day. Hope, oh, am I hope. the only one with a picture of the Alan Jackson? Yeah, I think someone else has to have a picture that they sent in. Oh, oh. My. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah! It has to be Elliot. Whoa, dude! Who is this guy? Yeah. Oh, it's 1976 Centennial, man. That's a Centennial year. I see, see the, the little flag Centennial back flag there. back there. OMG, look at that haircut. Yes, that look at the great hand placement, too. Great hand placement, great Hawaiian shirt. I'm so Marcus happy that you made fun, of me, out. made fun of me for a good five minutes. Because <laughs> now I don't feel bad. Look at this. I know. I got the, I tried to get the worst one I could get. That's hilarious. That's terrible. I mean, the bowl cut. Yeah, I mean, mom it's straight up me. like a bowl. Yeah, like because that's not straight across. That's no, mom, someone going hold still. Mom, and yeah, just doing I that. didn't hold still, evidently. No, you didn't hold still. And what is this? Is is that a bell or like a, a that's mug a Liberty the, Bell? That's a Liberty Bell. Ah, so uh, you play I love the my country. Wow. wow! Look I'll at that you. shirt. It looks mm. kind of like a Trader Joe's shirt. That... I see Stamos in these shirts now. And I'm Stamos like, wears I started these shirts this in '76, bro. I started this trend. So what year was this? Oh! <laughs> now he's got the suit. That's a leisure suit. I hear. <laughs> he's you're a man on the prowl. Yeah. Look at the, you were always a player. Oh, even back then. I guess you know if I looks could kill. Look man. at this guy. All right, but, well, let's keep going. That's not technically. Oh, yes. You had one of these. I had this one because you had this. Yeah. You, well, you did this picture, did you not? Back in, we did, this was a school picture, yeah. the second one. Yeah. You well, the, the, okay, so most, back in the day, yeah. school pictures, the professional ones in the yearbook were black and white. Yeah. And then every now and then for the seniors, they now, do color. And, and, they did color. That's environmentals. Yeah. Environmentals. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they did this in my eighth grade, but they give you a school picture, but then they come back and want to do a trend in picture. And you remember uh, this jacket? Because you you still wear these jackets. Oh, yeah. That's a. That's this a, is a Levi's dude. 501 denim jacket. So this is what, what grade is this? Probably eighth grade. Dude. You look a little stud. <laughs> well, I had the jacket. You had the jacket. Saved the money. You had the the. Uh, you had it wasn't the, the lead jacket either, bro. No, this I is see a lead five. See that little red. Yeah, I see on the there? red. Little, that's a lot the, of uh, denim going on there, bro. A lot denim, of denim on denim. I thought you because you're still a denim guy. 
I love denim. So I figured you'd like it. Uh, not only do I love denim, I love this picture, and I love that the hair on the sides <laughs> is just barely touched above the ear at the top. It doesn't like yeah. you're not combing it in. Yeah. You're not cutting. Well, it I was off. trying to go along like you guys. It's kind of like a feather. Yeah. yeah, you're doing the feathered look. You know, hey, but I you just had not have the full feathers. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I couldn't get mine to grow. <laughs> you're still growing the feathers. Feather. Looks great. Thanks. Let's. Go. Oh, now see. Now here it goes. Now. Now, now you're just now bragging. You're, now you're 18. Now you're showing off. Now we're doing seniors. I only brought one photo. Well, this I is thought you were going to bring multiple photos. I didn't want to make it all about me. <laughs> Look at this handsome devil. Oh, good Lord. He was hoping. What was, was this your senior year? That was, you, That's you what take we that did. right before your senior year. Yeah. Dude, look at that chain. You like that herring bone? That flat six gold m- chain. Six millimeter, 10 karat gold, 18 inch wow. herring bone chain from I, the Jewelry Exchange. Jewelry Exchange, if you listen, we will still take your support, and thank you for that. I can't make fun of this. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with this picture. I don't have a belt on, but besides that, it's... These are some you know, hammer I, pants or I something. I would have... Yeah, technically, if you're tucking in, you, you should, should have, have a belt, belt on. Uh, yeah. But you got the pleats going. I had some good pleats. That looks like stuff from Chess King or Merry Go Round. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a Chess King special. All right, let's move on. I'm tired of looking at this. <laughs> oh! Who, uh, who is that guy? What in the bride of Chucky's list? <laughs> <laughs> what? Look at this. Who is this? Oh, my God. Is Lord. this Mark Havaball or is this Elliot the intern? Uh, that that was me before nah, the uh, beautiful you. ginger beard grew in. Man, again, with the bowl haircut. Yep. That's what, what I said. I have no recollection of this picture. The bowl that they used was uh, so tight that it compressed my brain and caused memory loss. <laughs> so, you, look, no you're idea. a handsome little devil, buddy. That's a kid every other mother would love. And every, every other mother. Every other <laughs> mother, yeah. Every other oh, that's mother. That's great. That's yeah. fantastic. That's a good one. Kid, every other mother. Uh, yeah, not one out of three. Necessarily your mother, yeah. but every other mother. Like ninety eight percent of dentists approved, two <laughs> percent don't. I like the striped shirt. I think the stripes like, are hot. Is that Bert or Ernie shirt? <laughs> I can't remember which was it Bert or Ernie who had that. I think it's Ernie, wasn't it? All right, (laughs) yes, Ernie. Thank you, Elliot, for sharing that beautiful, uh, adorable picture of yourself. You're quite Um, welcome. Let's keep going. Let's see if we got. Oh, now what we have here? We got a whole school, Uh, home of De Grace Elementary School. (laughs) That's Miss Martin's class, grade three, nineteen seventy eight to seventy nine. Now, let's see here, who. And where is the person I'm looking for in this picture? I have a couple of comments right off the bat. Uh, wait, did I say something de great? What is it? De grace. De grace. Something, but what's the first word? H A Havry? Harvry? Elementary school. Miss Martin. Grade three, which makes me think it's Canadian because they don't say third grade up there, they say grade three. FYI, uh, that's how you catch Canadians because uh, they don't say like, "Oh, I'm sorry." They go, "Oh, I'm sorry." They go, <laughs> "Just now learning your Canadian." You hear them say "sorry, sorry," or about the boot. Oh, that's how you catch Canadians. Catch them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Mark Havaball, you want to explain this picture, please? Well, first off, that's that town is Havre Grace. It's about thirty miles east of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And, uh, How close is that to Canada? <laughs> it's much closer than it is here. That's true. <laughs> so I'm not 100% wrong. It was actually named after a town in France. Lafayette named it when it came through George Washington. So Havre de Grace almost became our capital, but that's a story for a later day. Uh, oh, <laughs> interesting. So, now, where are you in this picture? I Hang am, on, let me guess. You're okay. right in the middle, the very tall one. <laughs> <laughs> you look different. <laughs> That was you before, shrank. That was before I lost a few feet. Uh, actually, <laughs> where two, are you in this pitch? Look at all these kids, man. Far right. Look, the same shirt that Elliot had on. You got two it's kids, a, a same, boy and a girl, wearing the same shirt yeah. that Elliot had on. Well, if you take a look, there's Very a there's a shirt. stud there with uh, glasses on and a sweater vest next to the teacher. Oh, look oh, at them collars wow. with the big collars. Yeah, dude, with the <laughs> collar and the cardigan. Yeah. The cardigan yeah. and the collar. I see you. I see you with them glasses on, and that kid right there. Below Is that you. rerun right down below there too? That's rerun. <laughs> What's happening, Raj? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is Mark. Have a ball. Look adorable. And Cute the same cut. Smile. Same. No. Oh yeah. Just about. It's a little, a little flared up, but let me see your hair now. Let's see what you got going on. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, a little different. No, yeah. we've, we've all changed. Thank you, the Alan Jackson. Is that all the pictures? Uh, what I'm trying yeah, to say is, good. huh? Yep. That's okay. It. Uh, happy. National School Picture Day, everybody. I hope you mm. post your pics because yeah. I want to see I can't these. wait to this see This is them. great. I'm jealous. 
with y'all's pictures. I thought mine was going to be funny. It was. I think you won. I think you win this one. If we're, if we're doing thing. a contest, you win this. Thank one. you. All I right. thought so too. We got a lot of show to do, guys. Um, we got uh, a dating game with Isaiah. Uh, it's his birthday today. Uh, that's going to happen at some point. One of these days, I promise you, we'll get to it. It's in the to do list category. Uh, go to the Country Ish Facebook fan page, like it, leave a comment. Uh, if you want to play the dating game, let me know there. Uh, also, uh, there's merch merchandise uh, there as well. Go like the page. Uh, all right, uh, we went to the fair. We did. Remember when we went to the fair? I do. Was it just me and you? It was Marcus Stamos and Have a Bowl and Elliot and the Alan Jackson went right here in Hickory. And I'd like to show you some highlights of, of the fair. You want to see some highlights? I'd love to. My man, the Alan Jackson, will hook us up. We went there. Um, we had a good time. Didn't get the food till the end, but check this out. I was on a mission. I had a couple of things I wanted to find out from people at the fair. Do you know how when you walk around, um, and no, when you go to a, when you watch a red carpet event for any yeah. like movie or re- the Oscars. Yep. Remember how um, Joan Rivers or Melissa And I thought Rivers, about Joan Rivers when you were doing this. Yeah. You're like the John Reapers. I'm, yeah, the John Rivers Reapers or Re- something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was like, she's always asking people in the red because they're dressed up real nice. Mm-hmm. And I love fair fashion. Fair fashion. <laughs> so my idea was to ask people, who are you wearing? Oh, you'll see. You'll see. That, that's where I got the idea from. Let's watch this real quick. Hello, everybody. It's John Reap. You probably already know that. I'm here at the uh, Hickory Fair. And uh, I think I'm going to walk around and just ask people, who are you wearing? Like it's a fashion show. Right. And who is better, Nickelback or Creed? These will be the or Creed. Which is people at the fair love Nickelback and Creed. They both. Who are you wearing? <laughs> um, well, today I'm wearing uh, Under Armour. Um, <laughs> and I'm wearing Sex Wax. <laughs> sex, sex Wax. wax. Yeah. Sex Wax. Yeah. Uh, Nickelback or Creed? Creed. Ooh. Creed. Creed, definitely. Creed all the way. There you go. Who are you wearing tonight? Who am I wearing tonight? Yes. I'm like a designer. Um, I guess Fruit Loop. Fruit Loop. <laughs> Fruit Loop. <laughs> Not Fruit Loop. He I bet Fruit Loop. Fruit Loop. Make some he said Fruit Loop. Yeah. Edible clothes. Fruit Loop. Loop. <laughs> and who is better? Would it be if you had to choose Creed or Nickelback? Creed. That's everyone's going Creed. Yeah. What about you? Creed or Nickelback? Nickelback. Oh. That's Phil's first one. In this house. Three to one. Kendrick Honda of Hickory. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Thank you. All right, y'all have fun. You did. Hey, Boomer. <laughs> what are you doing? This That's is interesting. That's a cow, not a bull. Yeah. He's been steered. I don't know that. I really what, don't what know. What does that mean? What did you What did you do to steer it? You castrate them. With oh. You. <laughs> yeah. So what we do is we put like give them some shots and make them get to sleep. Was and it then, Johnson and Johnson or Pfizer? <laughs> he lays down, and then we kind of wrap our finger around. Well, we, we, we make oh, sure. Oh, make you see. We yeah. make sure there's two of them. Two. Yep. And then you cut them. Two testicles. Yeah. yeah. And then you cut them in half. Yeah. Then you push it out. I feel weird with this. <laughs> <laughs> you wrap your finger around it and oh. you pull it out. What is it? The testicles. Both of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Oh man, and that makes him a steer. Yeah. Wow. What are you gonna do? You gonna, get, you gonna go like gangster? <laughs> He's trying to get Creed yeah. or Nickelback? Nah, Creed. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you wearing today? Nah. Walmart. Nike. Looks good. Samba. I love it. If you had to choose between Creed and Nickelback. Creed! Oh, man, everyone's saying Creed. Though. Creed. That's the speed of the third ball. The I third? give you the first two ball speed, but I need to know the third one. Third ball. Left-handed, right? Left-handed, Marcus. This is First. tough. Left-handed baseball. You did pretty good. 41 miles an hour. That's pretty Not good. Bad. That's pretty good. Going left hand. Oh, left hand. <laughs> 35. Uh, that looked like George Bush going the ball first pitch out. <laughs> no oh, way, Paul's it. <laughs> See, I don't know which was worse. Yeah. 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 Mine was pretty bad, too. Oh, he's 
Carrot top. Yeah, that's me. I know, but you won the America's. America's uh, handsomest show. devil. No. <laughs> that's common standing. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's common standing. Oh, this was fun. Pig racing. I won. I bet on oh, my, my pig won, and we made bets. So you owe me five bucks tonight. Look at this. I bailed. Oh, me and Jody. Oh, how sweet. Love. Look at this love right here. Look at these characters. Steamos kicking the crap out. I look like Aladdin coming out of my car. <laughs> I know. He's gliding right away. The, the trick to the slide is knowing when the humps are coming and riding it like a bull. Almost. Okay. You just, your hips got to get into it. Bumper cars was fun. Uh, not as fun as what I remember as a kid. No. Back in the day, they had electric sparks coming off the Oh, things. yeah. They They're very slow today. We went to this dumb thing. Forest something. It's supposed to be like a fun house, but this thing is so old that really we had to make up our own kind of fun. <laughs> like, look at that, that. This was the best the thing. Famous house of fun. This little bar here is right on the junk. If it goes down any more, don't look at it. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Look how scared Mark gets. You'll see his face change here. Oh, I like this. <laughs> So I believe March Jump went up into his uh, <laughs> yes head. I'm going to go inside there and put the finger around the boat and pull him out. Turn into a steer. Look at him. Oh, boy. So who are you wearing tonight? Well, we're in country. Country. More country yeah, than country. this. Yeah. Country. Now, last question. You have to pick one band. Nickelback or Creed? Oh. 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 Creed. Creed. Yeah, I'd have to go with Creed. There you go. Thanks, guys. Well, there you go. That's the uh, Hickory Fair for you. Had a good time. Uh, saw some weird animals. Rode some rides. Had a good time. And it looks like Creed wins tonight. Uh, I think we had one or two Nickelbacks, and that was it. So We'll see you next time. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Yeah, Kiss I believe it was just one, uh, one, nickel one Nickelback. One Nickelback. Yeah, one Nickelback. Creed takes the victory the at the Hickory, Mo at the, uh, Hickory Fair <laughs> in a landslide. That's right. Um, so thanks, guys, for coming out. I hope you had a good time. Just one caveat, Thank you. though. Yes. It was, I know it was the Hickory Fair, Yeah. Um, but it should be the Country-ish Fair. It should be the country ish fair. Yeah, we just, just take it over. They need to uh, sponsor us. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And they're probably they not going to do that since, no. since the little seven year old girl had to tell John what the difference between a bull and a steer was. I'm telling you, I'm ish. She's part Did of you know? Yeah, I'll raise cows. <laughs> when? I'm country. Good Lord. You hired me for this purpose. I had 14 head of cow back in the day. <laughs> oh, there it comes. That's the Yeah, accent. there it come back out. Don't hide it. From look, me. I think it's... Any interesting comments so far? We're about to give some money away. Do, look, we got a lot of show coming up. i got money to give away, residual checks. Um, we've got a great interview by uh, comedian Rich Scheidner in a great small town news story. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot to do. But real quick, any interesting comments? In or anything grade. on the, yeah, the the uh, school pictures. Uh, Lorianne DeSanto said that in first grade, everyone said she looked like a monkey. Bless her heart. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of kids look like monkeys back in the day, <laughs> especially if they're in the seventies or eighties. They all had that monkey haircut, just the, like that. All right, let's give money away. Um, I'm excited for this. Me too. I've got four checks sitting right here. Now, for those of you who might just be tuning in for the first time. First of all, thanks for checking out the show. Hope you're having fun. Hit the share button. Um, but uh, your boy here has done some acting in the day. I've been in some movies, sitcoms, TV commercials. I've done some adult films I'm not happy about. And uh, commercials for Preparation H, mm. which we'll get here to in a minute. But they have to... Oh, the voiceover. Oh. And a movie that's out right now on Amazon Prime called Astro Loco. Loco. You can check me out on Astro Loco. It's my voice on the computer of the ship. Anyway, when they air these things, they have to pay me. They're called residual <clears throat> checks. 
And uh, I thought it'd be fun to make a game out of it. So what I'll do is I'm going to open the, one of these checks. I'll let Sebastian pick out of these four checks right here. He'll pick one at random. And then I will open it on the show. I will read you what it is, how it's airing. And you make a guess at home. Person closest to the exact amount wins the check. It is a game that we oh like to God. call... How much is that Screen Actors Guild residual? Oh, check. oh, I think I got it just uh, right that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. right, Sebastian. Oh, I can pick. I got to pick. Hand me one. Out you want to pick? You just pick one. I'll pick one. I like I'm this one. Look, you're picking. Boom. Here's Boom. a check. I'm going to open it down here where you can't see. I'll tell you what it is. I'm ready. I'm going to kill it this time. I'm ready. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some in-house guesses. That'll give you time, you people, time at home to figure out what your guess is going to be. Before you call in, there should be a phone number at the bottom of the screen. Call that number because here in a minute, after they guess, you read my poker face. I'll kind of give you clues as to how you should guess. Call the number. We're going to take three people at random. And uh, closest one wins a check. Now, okay, this is very interesting Ooh. for many reasons. Mm. Number one, it's your favorite TV show. <gasps> it's my favorite TV show? Jane the Virgin. I love Jane the Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> this is you Jane can't the even Virgin, find a virgin in the state, much less Jane. No, no. that's true. Yeah. They don't exist They don't anymore. exist. No. Um, but this is Chapter 68. I oh, we just uh, missed one chapter. Just one chapter. I wasn't in the ne- I wasn't <laughs> in the next one. Dang it. And this is just for internet <laughs> rental. Oh. All right. So you've guessed on the Jane the Virgin checks I've before. I have. I'm shocked that you make this kind of money on Jane the Virgin. Two things. Oh, it's two things. There's before tax and after tax. Are we doing after or before? We're going to guess before. Good. And then we're gonna. Um, Sadly, give you after whoever wins. <laughs> so just know that, Sebastian. Oh, I think it's going to be seventeen dollars. Okay, and eighty-four cent. Seventeen dollars and eighty-four cents. You know, knowing the game and all that stuff. Yeah, not bad. It's not bad, but it's you're in the double digits. Yeah, I need. I need to. I need people to do single digits. Well, I didn't want to insult but you. But that's fine. I no, thought no. I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, look, I've given away a check on here once for like over 900 bucks. I know. So Not for Jane the Virgin. Not for Jane the Virgin, but this is the fun of the game. Sometimes you're going to get these checks. Yes. And it's less than what you said. Yeah. Now let's go over to one of my interns. I'm going to go with uh, Elliot the intern. How much is Queen Ocean? $9.12. <gasps> Mark, have a ball. So I have to ask, if I can, higher or lower? I'm not nope. saying a word. <laughs> okay. It's too close. No, I'm almost afraid to let you guess. Might not. Write Could it down. I'm Write it down on a piece of paper, and then we'll find out at the end. Because I'm afraid of what my reaction is going to be if you get it exactly right. Yeah. Should I let him guess? Well, you got, Committee? The, you got the the Ellen Jackson. You got the the, the callers going to we'll get. S- we'll save and we'll see. Save and see. Okay. That way. Did we, you we have see the my re- Have I ever reacted like that? Never. To a guess? Never. Let's go to the phone callers, man. The Ellen Jackson. Do we have people mm-hmm. in the bullpen? And keep in mind, Elliot is the rain man of the residual <laughs> check game. All right. Hi, the John Reap here. You're on the Country Ish Show. Who am I talking to? Mike D. How Mike, you Mike D? Yes, from Hickory. Wow. Wait, this is not Mike Dawson, is it? No, 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 no. Um, I don't know who that is, but no. That sounds just like uh, him. Yeah, sound like Dawson. Mike Davis. <laughs> Mike Davis. Mike Davis. Wow, dude. You yeah. sound just like a friend of ours named Mike Davis, also known as Mike D. Yeah. So you're from Hickory? No, I, I am. I'm in Hickory Rock now. What high school did you go to? 
Ford. Oh, uh, go Tigers! Took him a while. Yeah, I wonder what's going on here. Yeah, it took him a while. I think something. he was a Saint Stephen's guy. He didn't want to tell <laughs> nobody. Well, he oh, answered hell, slowly, man. so it could be Saint Stephen's. <laughs> could be Bunker Hill. I don't blame you. No, it's okay. No, it's Mike D, love that you called in. I really do appreciate you, brother. Uh, go Tigers if you actually yep. went to Ford. Now, what do you do for a living, brother? I drive a FedEx truck. Oh, nice. Oh. Well, thank you for your – I mean, during this COVID stuff, I mean, you've been a busy man. I'm getting your packages out. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> Would you call yourself I'm a, a hero? Huh? I'm a hero. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're a hero. Yeah. yeah. That's what package <laughs> handlers are. They like to handle their packages and their heroes at the same time. And I, I don't and know if you're watching me live, but I'd like to know your guess on this one check from one episode of Jane the Virgin. Mike D., how much is credit? Well, I'm going to have to go with around $9 and not 13 I'm going to go with $0.15. Cent. Ooh, mm. very good. Nine dollars fifteen cents. Lock him in. I think people are on on to me. So let's just keep going. I don't want to give any more clues. Good job. Let's move on to the next call. We got two more calls. We got two more calls. I feel like someone's going to nail it. I really do. All right, you're on the show with John Reap. Who am I talking to? What's up, John? This is Jacob Wheat in Birmingham, Alabama. Jacob Wheat. From Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, you're about to say something. No, Birmingham. Yeah. Paint me a Birmingham. Isn't that a song? Forrest Gump. Roll Tide. Roll yeah. Tide. Oh, see, that was my question. Anytime it's an Alabama person, I like to throw this out. Uh, Roll Eagle. Yeah. War Tide. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? I confused yeah. the two. So you're a Bama guy, huh? Congrats, I guess. So you guys, the, I guess they they're undefeated so far. Yeah, they killed uh, <laughs> uh, Miami this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah, we watched that. Yeah, I saw that. Um, uh, Michael Wheat, what do you do for a living? Jacob. Jacob Wheat. I uh, I pay Patreon fees and call into podcasts to try to win money. Oh, dude, <laughs> oh, I am uh, you are. <laughs> The I Grand Dragon. I'm rooting for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching. I think he's, look, I'm not going to say anything. You've been watching. You've heard some guesses. What's the guess? How much is this Grand Dragon to? Not knowing what Mr. Habibal is going to do, um, I'm going to go $9.27. Wow. Okay. Lock him in. Hold him up. Right. Hold Put him on hold. Reed. Lock him in. We got one more call left. No one's got it exactly right yet. But people are very close. Very close. And I cannot wait to see what this next caller is going to say. Deanna Jackson. Put him in the room. Hi, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? This is uh, Jordan Leftwich from Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, dude. Wilmington. Wilmington. I'll see you in two days, yes, Jordan. Are you going down the Wilmington? I'm going to Wilmington right, in two days. Home. I'll be ready for a free beer and a good place to eat, Jordan. <laughs> hook me up. <sighs> free beer and a good place to eat. I think I might help you out with that. You, Boom. You make sure. Let's You're make welcome. Sure. Yeah. Listen, I love me some Wilmington. No, I actually hung out with you. What? Say it again. And uh, when you came to Wilmington, the last time you came to Wilmington, you did uh, Dead Pro. I actually hung out with you after the show. I remember, dude. We had a good time. What do we do? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course I remember, and I can't wait wasted. to do it again. Um, I'm actually going to be in Wilmington, no joke. I don't know if it's on the tour dates yet, but I'll go ahead and throw it out there. It's after my gig in Raleigh. So I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, October 7, 8, and 9. Then on the 10th, October 10th, dude, I'm coming back. You coming? Come see me. Same place, Dead Crow. Oh, absolutely. All right. Me I'll too. buy you a drink this I'll time. Yes. Maybe. Well, you, <laughs> maybe you'll buy it for me after you possibly win this check. Yep. Now, what do you do for a living, buddy? That is true. I uh, work at a restaurant. I work at Eliza's in Wilmington. I uh, work as a uh, side chef. Okay, cool. Well, then that's free food for That's uh, free food. We are Eddie. 
Those free foods. I'll, for, uh, I'll see you this yeah. week. I'll see you this week. All right, dude. How much All is right. the Screen Actors Guild residual check? I'm gonna go with nine dollars and sixty-three cents. <sighs> Put them on hold. <clears throat> All right. Well, we have a winner. Obviously, someone always wins the check. Um, you were the closest. Okay. And then it veered off. I'm sorry. I should have said, yeah, definitely $9.12. <laughs> like Rain Man? He said I was Rain Man. <laughs> oh, because he called oh, it Rain yeah. Man. Yeah, you are the Rain Man. Yeah. <laughs> the Rain Man of the So residual. I have given the check to Mark Haveball. He's giving it to the Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson's going to crunch the numbers. He's going to hand it back to Mark Haveball, and he's going to run it in here to me. And I'm going to take the check, and then the Alan Jackson is going to just let the person into the room, whoever was the closest. And this person will be the winner. But I want to see if we can get them to the right amount. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, the Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let them back into the show. All right. The winner is back on the line. All right. Who's this? Hey, it's Mike D. Mike, Mike D. D. Mike's uh, guess was nine dollars and fifteen cents. Mike D, your guess was nine dollars and fifteen cents. The closest guess yeah. was by Elliot the intern, mm. which was nine dollars and twelve cents. You went three cents higher. I'm going to give you one clue, and then I want you to get it exactly right. right. Now here's your clue. Now not only are you going to win this check? But we also have tumblers similar to these that you're going to get from Elliot, especially if you get it exactly right. Nice. Okay. So your guess was 915. Elliot's was 912. There's a very, 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 very sad date coming mm. up. Mm. What's your guess? $9.11. Boom. 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 Nine dollars and eleven cents. Um, this close to nine eleven. That is before. In, yes. Taxes. There you go. Yes. I clarify that. So. That is before taxes, and that's the get. That's the amount I said that we were guessing on. Yes, you have a. That was actually going to be hand to God my first guess, but I thought it was too sad, so I bumped it up a penny. So. Right. Nine dollars and eleven cents is what is on this piece of paper. That I get before taxes. You're a magician when you moved that yeah. around, too. Well, let's see here. Do you want me to hold it long enough for Alan to zoom in and actually see? That, see I'll point to it, Alan. Here it is. Yes, hold it. Hold where it my fing- let him zoom in. See where my finger is? How cool. How can perfect. Ev- can everyone see that? Mm-hmm. $9.11. Now, <laughs> because sometimes I forgot to sign up as a corp. Your governor. Yeah. No, don't forget my governor. Government. Took your mind. Oh, my government. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I forget to be Grin Reaper. I'd just be John Reap. And if I'm not my corp, I'm just me. They take tax. Anyway, so this is what it is after taxes. You want to do another go around real quick after taxes? Give me one guess. $6.94. Sure. Close. Minus a whole dollar and two cents. Okay. $5.71. 82 cents. cents. Five dollars and 82 cents. Congratulations, Mike D. <gasps> What are you going to do with all that cash? I'm going to the liquor store. (laughs) (laughs) One bottle of aristocrat vodka. (laughs) There you go. Congratulations, everybody. All right, Mike D., what I need you to do is go to countryish.com. Countryish.com. Click on the contact section and then send me an email from the website that will be sent to Elliot, the intern, and he will get this check out to you plus one country-ish tumbler. How you like them apples? All right. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more country-ish after this. Hey, everybody. John Reap here, and I want you to go cruising with me. Not in our cars, but on a ship. Yeah, let's take a ship together. It's the Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise, November 6th through 11th. 
This year, we leave out of Port Canaveral, Florida. We go to a private beach in Haiti where they have the world's longest zip line over water. We're going to Nassau, and it's five days, baby. I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing karaoke, and I'm doing stand-up comedy, and we're even doing Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. So get on the boat with me. Go to johnreap.com, click on the Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise, and this is the t-shirt you get. Isn't that something? I'll see you on the boat. Hey there, are you a business owner? Do you have a product that you're trying to sell? Well, maybe I can help you. I've got over 350,000 followers across all my social media, and every episode of Country-ish we do gets thousands of views. So if you have a product that you want me to try on the show or to talk about, go to countryish.com, click on sponsorship, and maybe your stuff could be right here on my stuff. Hey, see, you could be a corporate sponsor. Speaking of sponsors, uh, we have a big one that we got not long ago. And I love all my sponsors, Hendrick, Honda, Hickory, and this next one. Um, we did a big ad for a big company that I'm sure you've heard of before, but just look at what we could do if you wanted us to do a commercial for you. Check it out. This is our new sponsor. Check this ad out real quick. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Country-ish. We'll see you all back here next week. Bicycle. <clears throat> Great show, man. Hey, are you okay? Well, you know, I got a lot of itching back there. Uh, I feel like there's fire ants in my pants. I don't know what to do. I can barely make it through tonight's show. Um, John, you, you're still live online right now? guess it's not just me. Thanks, guys. Here you go. Wait a minute. You've had this in your bag the whole time. Well, you bet. I keep this on hand for butt itch. This is actually a <laughs> preparation they spray. It works fast and no touch, so... I mean, I... Hey, what about the show, John? I mean, you know, the Oscar goes to <laughs> Marcus, Marcus Stamos. Stamos. I love him so much, but <laughs> not an actor. He's just a good-looking dude. Let's yeah. just leave it at that. Very funny. <laughs> that took a long time. <laughs> D. Allen Jackson, I, I hope one day to show outtakes and bloopers from that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough time right now to edit all the outtakes we have, but uh, I will try to do that sometime. So. Just trying to get him to say, what about the show? Hey, John, what about the show? <laughs> What about the show, John? I mean, it's weird. You don't know what, when a camera's on you sometimes. You don't oh, know what yeah. to do with your hands or your yeah. face or words. Yeah, it's they, different. Uh, they, Definitely different. Yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> I do love have uh, like 28 takes of him saying butt itch if anybody wants a super cut. <laughs> I'm going to loop that sometime. I love it. Great. All right, look, let's. So we got two more segments. It's already nine o'clock, nine o one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As I talk, don't forget to hit the rate, review, subscribe, and share. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Hit the share button. Uh, this next dude, this next guy is a legend in the legend. comedy world. That's right. In the eighties, he made. Tons of appearances on television. Late Night with David Letterman, Tonight Show, Johnny Carson, and Jay Leno. Mm. That's how long this guy's been doing it. Um, HBO Half Hour Special, One Night Stand. I want you to uh, get excited for the very funny. Who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Rich Scheidner. Right now, the very funny, very talented uh, legend, Mr. Rich Scheidner. How are you, sir? Good job. Very good, man. I want to go. Yeah. I know you're doing the history of stand-up comedy right now. Yeah. You got the book out, yeah. and that is fascinating to me because I love yeah. the history of comedy. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a stand-up comedy is an original American art form. We started a guy named Artemis Ward. That started back in the Civil War. Lincoln was a big fan. He used to sneak into the White House late at night. He was a drinker. Lincoln was a teetotaler. Mary Todd Lincoln hated any kind of show people. They'd sneak him in because Lincoln loved to laugh, man. Uh -huh. And right, and and Artemis would tell him stories and jokes, and they 
they'd hang out and Lincoln be all refreshed and he'd leave. And he was just a wild guy. He did a tour. You'd love this talk about the South at the end of the war. Right. I mean, you know, at the end of the civil war, things were bad in the South, bad, mm-hmm. poor people were starving. Yeah. And he's, and he says, and he was like the most popular performer in America at the time, huge star and all the, through the North. He said, I'm going to do a tour of the South. I'm going to do a tour of the South. And, and uh, he told his manager, all the money goes to Confederate Widows Relief Fund, wherever we perform, all the money. And, and the people in the, and his manager said, you can't go in the South. The North is still angry at him. And, the, and you're losing your fans in the North. He says, my fans are everywhere. My fans are in the South and the North. And I've, wherever I go, and I'm going to make people laugh. That's what I do. And he went to New Orleans and went all the way up. And he gets up to Richmond. Richmond, after the, right after the war, it was devastating. Yeah, right. And he does a big show there. And this Confederate colonel comes up with an arm pinned up where he lost an arm, right? And he comes up, and after everybody, they're partying afterwards, right, after party show. And finally, this guy's been in the corner. He comes over. He goes, I've been watching you, Mr. Ward, and I come to this show tonight expecting to have a little trouble with you. He said, uh, because I, I, I think and we got very few pennies down here, and here comes this Yankee down here taking what we got. And I found out that you're uh you're you're donating all the money now i gotta ask you one other question sir he said where were you doing what did you serve during the war and he said artemis ward goes no sir i did not serve during the war um he was too frail he had tuberculosis he had two i couldn't he said but i made a deal i told i i sent a letter to general lee and said if he didn't not bother my mother in maine i would not take up arms against him and Mr. Lee kept to his side of the bargain, and I kept to mine. And the, and, the, and, the, and the Confederate laughed, and they shook hands, and the Confederate says, well, then here's this. And he pulled out a couple cigars and a bottle of whiskey, and they started drinking. Oh, man. <laughs> so he was a cool guy. He was a wild guy. I didn't know about the Artemis. Um, yeah. I knew Mark. Yeah. Uh, I thought it just went back to Mark Twain. Yeah, yeah. Mark Twain learned from Artemis. They met out in the West. Uh, where, where Mark Twain was a reporter at this ter- Virginia city was a big mining place where the North was getting all the money for the war. And, uh, and he took Artemis word went through there and toured and they, they hung out for a week together and partied. And he, and Twain said that he learned everything about doing stand up from, from wow. Twain. Wow. Now, so that was, call it stand-up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would have been bef- obviously before, um, I mean, is there any, they they can't be recorded any re- records of this, right? Like, no, no. Yeah. I got I got I got re- records of his um his, his shows, some of the jokes. I mean, not everything's recorded, but he went to England, became a huge star, and died there. He was only thirty two. Oh, so he 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 was he conquered England, you know, because England looked down on us. We were just a bunch of yeah. rude <laughs> England. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they said the only thing funny about when you guys is going stage and dance to you know, fiddle music with a coonskin <laughs> cap. That's funny. <laughs> But other than that, there's nothing funny about you Americans. And then he went over there and blew them away with what he was doing. They'd never seen anything like it. They said wow. it's complete original. You got to realize how radical it was. People, there were no full comedy shows. Comedy right. is just a little part. You couldn't laugh too much or you looked like you were rude laughing at somebody. And he comes out and says, I'm just doing a whole show for laughter. And people would be, the young people dug it all over. But some of the older people go like, well, this is kind of uh, uh, unseemly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So that was like the court gestures have sort of uh, wised up or something. That's I see. I didn't know. How, how much time do you think he did? Did he do like an hour? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. what he did. He said they had these lectures and he just come out and he goes, and he just, he, look, he had jokes. Some of the jokes you can actually still work. He says, we must all learn to be happy and live within our means even if we have to borrow money to do so. <laughs> that's, that's good. Uh, wow. Right, right. Uh, so Mark Twain right. learned from uh, Artemis, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, then when did it become like, I know then the vaudeville, vaudeville, vaudeville opened up right before vaudeville, like that period of like the end of the civil war. And before like 1880s for about a 15 year period, there were just saloons and that was just men drinking with prostitutes. That's all that was in the saloons. Right. There was no, no, no respectable woman would ever go into a saloon. Okay. And they had shows and they'd have communist shows, but that's where you get the term slapstick. Because they're always like teams. Two guys beat each other to death with sticks before the, you know, it's like, we'll beat each other. That way the audience won't beat us. You know, they were just roughs. These saloons were just guys yeah. and, and hookers, you know. <laughs> and and then and Vaudeville comes in and says, you know, we want it respectable. We want it to be respectable. We want women in. We want children in. We want the whole family. And America's getting prosperous in the 1880s, right? Money, leisure time, all that. And uh, so they go, but you got to be totally clean. I mean, you couldn't say holy G. You couldn't say slob. You, oh you know, God. you no reference to hell, not even you couldn't you, if you said hell, you'd never work any place ever again. 
or damn, you couldn't say anything, not even a reference to it. Like yeah. you couldn't say devil. You So wow. you had to work totally clean, totally clean. You know, man, but there so, were always guys, there were always guys that were working the line, you know, always guys that go over the line. Or Milton Burl, Milton Burl, right? We always laugh because he's an old guy when you and I started, right? Old, old, dead, you know? But he was like, he was a teenager, like 18 years old doing comedy, and he's always pushing the limit. Here's a joke that got Milton Burl fired in eight, in, in 19, 19, 19, like 24. Okay. 1924 in Vaudeville. He goes, I t- this young woman said to me, are you looking at my knees? He said, no, I'm way above that. <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> that got him fired. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, comedians today, I mean, half of the people wouldn't be able to do anything today. No, That's... no, they'd, they'd be shot on stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So how did how did this whole thing begin for you? Not, I mean, not, the, not, not your stand-up. I want to get into that in a second. But coming up with this, uh, the, the history of comedy, what made you want to start yeah. that? I was friends with Phyllis Diller when she was alive, obviously. And we'd always talk, you know, she was the first great star female comic. And we talk comedy all the time. She was such a smart woman and so so knowledgeable. And we we were talking about that somebody should do a book on the history of stand-up comedy. This is back in like 2005 when I came out, uh, Mark Schiff and I came out with a book called I Killed. Yes. About road stories. Yes. And uh, Phyllis says, you know, you should, we really, somebody should do one on the history of stand-up comedy. And we both thought it was Mark Twain. And I started reading Mark Twain stuff. And then I came across an essay he wrote about Artemis Ward. He wrote two of them, actually. And dad was like, whoa, He's, he said, this is the funniest guy I ever saw. And I go, whoa, whoa, who's this guy? And then I started researching him. Oh, OK. Very nice. Well, I, I can't wait to read it and get into it. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by that stuff, too. Uh, but what about you? So t- tell me about your your experience. Like when, when you started, what made you want to start comedy? All, all of it. Yeah, you know, Josh, I, I was um, I grew up in South Jersey, small town. It's very rural. They call it uh, South Jersey, the northernmost part of Alabama. That's where I'm from. <laughs> right. So, you know, there's like my mom was from North Carolina. There's always country people coming through. There was a real mix, a real wild uh, rural area and small town. And mm-hmm. I, I was in Washington, D.C. I was going to law school and um, it wasn't a great law school. It was the International School of Law and Screen Door Repair. <laughs> it was just the, it, was, it was it was more you know so and i thought i was funny a buddy of mine thought i was funny he said you gotta go do this and he took me to a coffee house okay a coffee house in 1977 there were comedy clubs that were i didn't know we, i don't even know if we called it stand-up i'd seen i'd seen george carlin live i'd seen robert klein live i'd seen martin mall live i'd seen some people live doing stand-up but i i didn't know what it was really i just and I went down there like you or me or anybody else that first time, every you, me, Foxworthy, Ron White, whoever it is, you had to go that first time where you went from being funny around your friends on the fly in the moment mm-hmm. to being funny on demand in front of strangers. That's the transition, right? Yeah. That's the trend. And when you get up there and nobody knows until they see those eyes looking at you, not eyes, eyes looking at you going like, you gonna make me laugh? That, like that this. Look, until you see, right? That's right. That's right. Until you see those eyes looking at you. That's right. The arms crossing. You you gonna make me laugh? Yeah. You, nobody knows what that's like until they see it. And 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 that I did it the first day. I got one one reaction. I did like five minutes, and one guy went huh, like that. That's all. It was. <laughs> yeah. And that was enough to bring me back a second time. But, uh, who were some of your comedy idols? Well, growing up, I mean, I was probably more influenced by uh, Ed Norton on The Honeymooners or, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, I love that, but I, I loved Carlin. You know, I remember getting the, his first time I had heard his album, 72, Class Clown, was like unbelievable. Okay. And I loved Klein and I love, of course, Richard Pryor. These are the guys that I was coming up. Uh, uh, probably Albert Brooks, when I was a young guy, was like my favorite oh, comedian yeah. stand up. Um, but I, you know, it's funny when I got into the history of it all, I started, I, I started collecting albums. I was on the road for all those years. You know what I mean? You got time to kill on the road. You start collecting something, right? Yeah. And, and I, I got in, um, I don't know if you ever heard me from North Carolina originally, brother Dave Gardner. Did you ever listen to brother Dave Gardner? Uh, uh, that name is familiar, wow. but I'm, I'm not I'm going to turn you on. I'm going to send you some CDs of brother Dave Gardner, man. Oh, please do. Stuff. You got here because he was like the Lenny Bruce of the South. And, uh, oh, dear hearts, dear hearts. He was <laughs> funny, man. He was a former drummer, musician. Uh, he actually had, like, a pop song hit back in, like, the 50s or something. And then he got into comedy. And he was wow. a huge, huge uh, guy back in the 60s, early 60s and all, from, from North Carolina. But my dad had one of his out. My dad collected comedy albums when I was a kid. 
So I listened. I heard all kinds of different people when I was growing up on you know, these comedy albums my dad had. Red Fox. My dad had all kinds of albums. Yeah. So that's what – so you kind of um... – Grew up with it, and uh, and it was important. Was comedy important in your house? Was being funny important in your house? Yeah, my dad right. was hilarious. My dad was a class clown in his high school. You know, everyone. There you are. When I was a kid, my dad was the funniest person, and his friends thought thought that way too. So I would I would see how his friends treated him. Um, you know, like couldn't wait for to see what he would say if something crazy happened. They'd look at him like, what's David going to say about this? And I remember, like, they're, they're, that's kind of a neat little power to have, you know, people can't. <laughs> and so I, all my life when I was a kid, I just wanted to make my dad laugh. And if I could make my dad laugh, I thought, like, oh, I got something here. Um, so, yeah, it was important in my house, definitely. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My dad, when a comedian came on Ed Sullivan's show or something, you better keep your mouth shut. You're going to get whacked in the side of the head. Yeah. Comics off and shut up. You know, yeah. it was important in my house. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you. my Same dad lo- loved Saturday Night Live and Steve Martin. And I remember being able to watch. We watched, I mean, it sounds weird today to say this, but Bill Cosby, the special called Bill Cosby himself. Oh, um, that's a great special. It's great. It's killer. Yeah. And he just walks on stage and tells nothing but great stories. And you're into every, and it's not rushed. It's not forced. It's effortless. And it's still today, I think, one of the best specials I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to believe what a fall from grace that man had because, it, it, I mean, I've seen him live a couple of times. What, how was it for you during the, uh, the, the shutdown with the pandemic and all? I just started writing a lot. You know, I did a couple of Zoom shows. Look, we all know that wasn't the same. You can't hear the laughter. The, the crowd never becomes a crowd. They're all in their own individual cubicles. They never become an audience. Yeah. Uh, I did a couple of those. I just spent more time writing. I yeah. mean, I, I, look, I'm at a point in my life. I'm, you know, I'm 68 years old, John. You know, so it's like I, I've had my shot. Anything I get to do now is just gravy. I'm lucky to do anything. I got enough money. I'm Okay. I feel bad for all the young comics. I felt so bad for the young comics who need this stage time and need this time in their career to develop. I felt bad for them. You know, I felt bad. Or maybe guys my age who had maybe one too many marriages and too many late, late term kids, you know, (laughs) that's their problem. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Rich, I really, really, really appreciate you doing this. My friend, um, go to, uh, rich, uh, for more info. He's got tons of stuff there. Um, lots of comedy and, uh, and his show and his book is right now. So, so thank you, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. Thank you, John. Rich, everybody. Come on now. All right. Thank you, Rich, for that. Check out his book, Kicking Through the Ashes, out right now. Very funny, dude. Um, Look, if you don't have any money and you still want to help the podcast out, you can uh, do that easily. Write a review on iTunes. Uh, You write us a nice review. Give us uh, five stars. We'll read it on the show. We'll give you a shout out. Uh, In fact, I think we have a new one. Elliot, do we have a new uh, review? Yes, indeed we do. This one is from J-C-R-E-H-M-E-8-2. Don't know how to pronounce that. John, I just recently started listening to podcasts and found you on here. I work for Penske Racing on the midnight shift, and your podcast keeps me entertained all night. I love it. (laughs) I started with a few fried pods, then went to the country-ish when you changed it. I'm still on the episodes in 2020, but I'm up to September and absolutely love it. Nice. I knew you from the Dodge commercials, and then you did the Penske (laughs) Racing Christmas Party in 2017 in Mooresville, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. where I work, and hilarious isn't the word for it. You were great. So happy I started listening to podcasts and found yours. Keep on reaping on, and I hope Popsicle and Mimosa are well. Oh, Oh, and by the way, I'm a ginger and six... Six feet, three inches of Twisted Seal and Sex Appeal. What? <laughs> oh, meet me in Mooresville, brother. <laughs> meet me in Mooresville. We'll fight this out. I know where you are, Pinsky. <laughs> Keep up this. It sounds like a movie, Meet yeah. Me in Mooresville. Yeah. We're going to record that video. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. Well, keep up the good work. And, oh, I drive a Dodge Ram, and that thing has a Hemi in it. Oh, look. Nice. Bicycle. All right, thank you for that review. Don't forget, you want a shout-out, write a review. It's that simple. All right, let's move on. we got one more segment, and uh, dare I say this might be the anchor of the show. People love it. You know, there's a lot of negative things going on in the news. 
And uh, we like to find the happy-go-lucky things that fall through the cracks. Sometimes they're happy-go-lucky, sometimes they're not. This one could go either way, but we'll make it fun. We'll make it fun. Uh, It's a segment that can be best described by my good friend Justin Clyde Williams. Check it out. We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. Alrighty, check out this headline, buddy. This might be in some of y'all's ball courts here, your areas. Woman charged with traveling to Hawaii with a fake Moderna vaccine card. Ah. Oh. Oh. What are your initial thoughts? Initial thoughts is you know it had to happen soon. Yes. It had it, to happen. It had to happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 look, some people are calling her. The Rosa Parks of the non-vaxxer movement. Right. You know, it's she's like, I'm not doing out. it. She's not sitting on the back when of the When I say bus. some people, I mean, I came up with that. <laughs> Just you. <laughs> Just kidding. Have you ever been to Hawaii? No, you didn't take me. Oh, that's true. Next next go round. I I'll lived go. there for many years. Oh, you lived there? Yes, sir. Then you know when you go to Hawaii, it's, you know, look, let me just, uh, we'll get to this point in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Chloe uh, Mro, Mrozak. That's a weird one. Mrozak. Like Prozac? Yeah. Mrozak, 24, was busted for trying to skip Hawaii's 10-day quarantine mandate for unvaccinated Banking is an visitors. important role. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> unvaccinated visitors by presenting a fake card at the airport in Honolulu. Now, full disclosure, as okay. all of you know, I've had COVID a year ago. Yes. Right? I'm an OG COVID. You're an OG. I for, got it, for the fans that don't know, what is an OG? Original gangster of Gang. COVID. I had it right out the gate. Well, you know, some country people. Yeah, OV COVID. OV COVID. OG COVID. <laughs> I got it in July last year, and since then, I've also been vaccinated. All so right? you double dipping. Yeah. I got the Pfizer, right? And then you go back three weeks later, and you got to do... Yeah. I went, I went ahead and did Moderna after that, so I like to mix it up. <laughs> One Pfizer, one Moderna. Moderna. Yeah. And then I thought, like, you know what? Might as well complete the trifecta. <laughs> oh, you went and got a got uh, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson Johnson. Yeah. It's called a suicide, uh. which I may have done that <laughs> by taking all three. <laughs> JK, I took the one, but I have been vaccinated. And I shared this story on my Facebook page. And I did not know that a lot of my followers are doctors and lawyers. Because <laughs> everyone's got knowledge about it. Yeah. It's great. I love it. This is why I like doing this every now and then. It's uh-huh. like, ooh, what's going on? Um, so, yes, I know that Hawaii is a part of America. That is one of the states of the United States of America, of obviously. Um, but because it's an island, it's got different rules for travel, even before COVID. If you've ever been. I have a ball knows this. They got the agricultural inspection, right? Yes, sir. So when you come in there, they got to check your fruits and your veggies for fruit flies and whatnot. So, so I get it. They're a little different than, yeah. than other, every other state in America. But um, this unvaccinated woman's attempt to enjoy Hawaii vacation with her fake card all came to an end because of bad spelling. So they checked her bags and her luggage and her spelling. Sorry. (laughs) How do you spell whoopsie daisy? That's what happened here. Uh, The 24-year-old was arrested at the airport on the misdemeanor charge of falsifying vaccination documents. I should also be in jail because I've also, uh, you know. You've falsified documents before. uh, My report card. Me too. (laughs) I did. You can take the Ds and make Bs out of them. Oh, easily. You can't do it anymore. Yeah, and my signature kind of is like was my dad's. Yeah, you can do that too. You practice and you get it down. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, I should be in jail if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, When she first arrived in Hawaii, the Safe Travels Program administrator reported her COVID-19 vaccination card was possibly fraudulent it was signed by two National Guard members identified as Corporal Wolf and Staff Sergeant Monty. <laughs> That's just a bold move. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bold move to put to, to include the military on your fake government card, right? Uh, I guess when you lie, you got to go big or go home. Yeah. But is that like stolen valor? I mean, how do you feel about that, have a ball? <laughs> like if someone randomly included on their fake card 
a staff sergeant and a corporal. Well, Does that make you mad at all? Especially since it looks like it's the exact same handwriting for both. Right. <laughs> that, and then look at her name. What is that? <clears throat> Anyway, uh, she lives in (laughs) Illinois, but her fake card said she was vaccinated in Delaware. Hawaiian authorities determined from officials in Delaware that there was no record of her ever being vaccinated, which didn't take long to find out because it's Delaware. (laughs) It's the second smallest (laughs) state in the country. It's two phone calls. We don't know who that lady is. Never heard of her in my life. Uh, especially when Rozak is your name. Right? She should have said Texas. It would take way longer. Chloe Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's another issue. Her card misspelled the word Moderna. The correct spelling is M-O-D-E-R-N-A, but she spelled it M-A-D-R-N-A. And I got to be honest with you. I thought that's how you spelled it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Until I looked it up, like, well, what's wrong with it? <laughs> I mean, how, how do you pronounce that word? Uh, Moderna. Moderna. I didn't hear an O in there. How do you pronounce how, how it? Do you, Moderna. Moderna. How do you pronounce modern? Well, well no one to, says, right, it's the word modern with an A at the yeah. end. But no one pronounces it Moderna. Well, they used to talk about spelling, talk about hooked on phonics. You hear it, Moderna, you, you automatically think ma Moderna, yeah. right. How do you spell mom? M-O-M. Yeah, Not ma'am, ma but that's, M-A. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how she spells Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> she should have went straight Johnson, because I'm right. sure this that chick knows easy. about some Johnson. Right. <laughs> there it is. I love it. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. I Despite their initial that. suspicions, they <laughs> let her leave the airport. Officials later uh, could not find a reservation at the hotel where she said she was staying, and she did not list any return travel information either. Spe- uh, Special Agent William Lau of the State Attorney General's Office said he tracked her down on Facebook and he found her page where oh. she described herself as a model. Uh-huh. And I went to her Facebook page as well. Did you? Because I needed some proof. Is she a model? Let's just say Let's Victoria's s- Secret is still safe. <laughs> 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 is that her? That's her. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, unless the secret is I love weed and hate words. <laughs> I, mean, blunt, that, I, think it I don't know it. if you can see it, the Ellen Jackson. If you actually click on the background, sometimes it'll pull up the info. Yeah. yeah. This oh. is what the background says. Um, be so blunt that they could smoke your truth. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's like a Bible verse. Yeah. Smoke it with your fake vaccine card. <laughs> Roll it up and smoke it. She's pretty, though. Yeah. She's pretty. Yeah. She could model for like a nose ring company. <laughs> you know what I mean? I could see her on Gage yeah. Earring Quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> a gauge earring cord. Yeah, it's got some big gauge earrings, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe inked or high times. Her oh. photo gallery showed her with a distinctive tattoo on her left hip. It's a big tattoo that says, no regerts. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just, <laughs> <laughs> Just That's the only bit of getting. That was great. No I regrets. thought she had a real spelling problem. That there. would be hilarious. <laughs> she needs it. She needs to do that. If this girl has any sense of humor whatsoever, she'd have a redone. She needs to do a fake tattoo right now. It says no, no regards. <laughs> that would be great. Law enforcement spotted a woman with a tattoo at the Southwest Airlines counter and arrested her as she attempted to fly home. So, mahalo and aloha, woman. <laughs> After her arrest, authorities said she told an officer she was vaccinated by her own doctor. And he's the one they call Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. she said uh, even though COVID-19 vaccines are, uh, shots are free, she said she paid for the shot. So if she paid for the shot, that, <laughs> that's a double shot. I mean, that wasn't, vac- that wasn't the vaccine. <laughs> that was something else. Uh, Depending on the fine, she paid for it again. She might want to go get, get <laughs> tested for COVID and Hepatitis A through G. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she's like I said, she's the uh, she should have went to Florida. <laughs> she she she, she should have been from Florida, but she's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I hope she's okay. I mean, yeah. it sucks. She's kind of got that wave like on your school picture going out right there. <laughs> right, she does. <laughs> I that, yeah, she's gonna love this picture. So yeah. there you go, folks. The town might be small, huh, Justin? What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the producer might be slow. <laughs> Listen, only he's got live, a lot on his plate. Only live. We, yeah. Look, the town might be small, but the news might be huge. Who knows? Great story. 
Uh, I appreciate you for coming. Did everybody have a good time <laughs> oh, yeah, in good here today? Time. Wonderful time. Have yeah, a ball? Did you have a ball? Always. There it is. All righty oh. then. <clears throat> Don't forget to rate. I'm gassy now. This beer. That's <laughs> good. That's Moderna monumental. beer. That's yeah. all monumental. We need to get Chub Light going. Chub Light. Chub Light. Hashtag Chub Light. Yep. Follow it. <laughs> yep. Uh, that, that, I mean, that, uh, that should be a thing for real. Yeah. Uh, Okie dokie. We, we did good. I think I'm just looking to see if I forgot anything. Did I forget anything? I think we're, I think you covered it all. No, we did. We did like an hour and a half up in here. Yeah. Elliot, any final thoughts? Uh, two things quickly. Yeah. Uh, our good friend, a collective good friend, Mike Ellis of Artisan Entertainment is promoting a show with uh, comedian Dustin Sims at the Newton Performing Arts Center this Saturday right. at seven. So just go to the Newton Performing Arts Center website to, to get tickets to that show. And, uh, have a ball and I here have an issue with S Rose Forty. He's or oh she boy. says S Rose Forty has an issue with you. Obviously, interns. What school do they go to? KFCU. Now here's the thing. <laughs> we did, and we were on the fast track to get our collective GEDs until Roseanne Henshaw told us about how KFC screwed her over. So we dropped out. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Good, good pull. Good call back. And I wish Roseanne was on the phone right now to give us a good uh, chicken noise. Uh, <laughs> Sebastian, thank hey. you for putting up these uh, these monitors in here. Yep. Uh, thank you for poking up the sign. Uh, thank you for being here. Any final thoughts? Oh, it's just uh, share. Let's get a few more shares. I mean, yeah. we're always trying to get people to share. The last the I checked, we had 36. I'd like to get to 50, for, over 50. I'd like to get to 100 one these I mean, days. normally. Yeah. Come on. So thank you for doing that. Uh, for all of these guys up in here today, hope you had a good time. My name is John Reap. Bicycle! Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and yourself parked cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast that'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for country-ish. Go on, Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. still here i appreciate you i wonder if you stuck around just for this moment i like those kind of people and if i like you and you like me let's share it with other people hit the share button hit the share button